Do your lerps feel robotic? Do you wish that you could have your lerp smoothly accelerate and decelerate at different points? In this video, we're gonna take a look at advanced lerping and how we can manipulate the time parameter of a lerp to get non-linear interpolation between two points when we're doing a rotation and between two colors. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality where we're gonna talk about advanced lerping. So in a video a couple weeks ago, I did the lerping fundamentals where we learned how to use vector three lerp, quaternion lerp, doing fixed time, fixed speed, all this kind of different stuff. And that was kind of a basic introduction to what is lerping and how do you use it. There are some cool mathematical ways that you can do this, but I don't know math well enough to tell you how to do that. So instead, what we're going to use is the animation curve. And a little bit later on in the video, you'll see an even cooler way that allows you to add some randomness into how the smoothing is applied. This is a great way to add a little bit of kind of character into how things move, because if everything moves at a static pace all the time, it's not always the most fun feeling. It kind of feels robotic a lot of the times. So this is a great way to add a little bit more feel into your game. In this scene, I simply have a cube that's going to go between two points whenever we're doing movement lerping. I have a lerp manager script that's just going to control the different lerps based on a curve that we've defined. In the lerping fundamentals video, we looked at basic lerping, just moving from point A to point B with different methods. We're gonna use most of those same methods here, but we're going to move our cube on a curve. We can get the same behavior we had before by having a straight line curve from point one to point two that goes linearly. But a very common thing we want is movement dampening at the ends where the cube will go quickly in the middle and slowly at either end. That's what we call this kind of S curve. We've also got curves that will make it bounce kind of quickly at one end and go slowly at the beginning. And we can define really crazy curves to get wild movement. So I'm using the fixed time movement, meaning it's taking us exactly one second to go from point A to point B, we'll start seeing that this cube moves very quickly as we're moving it around with this wild curve because we're making it go quickly up and then back and we're adding a bunch of distance for the cube to travel upon. That's something to keep in mind in all of these that you may need to adjust the movement speed based on how crazy of a curve you have going on. The way you do this for a simple curve is simply to use curve.evaluate passing in the time instead of just vector3.lerp passing in the time. This will evaluate a point on the curve and tell the lerp function how far we are. So we're remapping the time to be whatever value on the y-axis on this curve. That's how we get the smooth dampening because we're saying, okay, the time is moving slowly during this point. It speeds up in the middle. And then at the end, it goes slow again when we're using the S-curve. We'll get the exact same behavior if we use the vector three lerp with fixed speed. And for this one, I'm gonna give the air quotes on fixed because it's not really gonna be a fixed speed anymore because we're going to again, remap the time using a curve. So we'll actually make it go faster and slower at different points, but we're using a base speed. Maybe calling it a base speed lerp would be a more accurate way to describe it because we're gonna make the cube accelerate during specific parts and slow down during different parts. But it's gonna have a target velocity that's gonna use that we'll just be remapping using this curve. This works the same way that you do a normal fixed speed lerp. Again, we're just going to use curve.evaluate, passing in whatever we're using for the time, and that's our time parameter for the lerp. There's nothing different here from how we did just this previous lerp. We move on to a rotation, we can do the exact same thing, but it looks a little bit funny whenever we're doing the continual spinning. All we'll do here is quaternion.lerp passing in the start and end rotation and then again curve.evaluate passing in the time on that curve. We'll see that there's kind of some jitter as I get close to the halfway point because remember that we can only pass in up to 180 degrees on a quaternion.lerp. If we go higher than that then it's going to try to take the shortcut and go the shorter distance. So if I pass 181 it's actually only going to turn 179 degrees. We can't just go from one rotation make it make a full circle and come back to the same rotation using the quaternion slurp or lerp at least. So you'll notice the behavior here is that they will follow this curve to rotate 180 degrees and then follow the curve again to go the second 180 degrees to complete the circle. If you're gonna have something constantly rotating, maybe this behavior is what you want, but it also may be a little bit weird. So depending on your use case, this may be maybe not super valuable for a constantly turning thing. For ad hoc turns, this is a good way to get a different feel than just the straight lerp or slurp. Finally, the color lerp works the exact same way. We can pass in a curve, do curve.evaluate based on the time. We can define the curve to make them kind of speed up and slow down at different points of the lerp. 
You know I'm not going to leave you just with that. This is the advanced lerping video. So if we look really closely at my lerp manager script, you'll see that there's this little drop down arrow next to my curve. I'm actually using the min max curve from the Unity engine particle system namespace. This is one of my favorite recent discoveries because it allows us to use that same editor that we get in the particle systems to manage multiple curves to get random between two curves, constant values, and curves all in the same control. What that means is from this control, I can define two curves and make it pick a random value between those two curves. If we pick a curve like this, where it's an S curve and that kind of parabolic curve, we'll see that going each direction, it's kind of picking a slightly different speed and behavior. We can achieve this using curve.evaluate, passing the time and a random value, but it's really important that you do not pass just random.value. You need to keep the same random value that you used the first time, otherwise you'll get a lot of really weird jitter because you're picking a random point between these two curves every frame if you do it that way. The other really important thing here is you want both curves to start at zero and end at one. If you choose some where you have kind of a gap at the sides, the cube may not make it to the point that you're trying to get them to and may not start at the point you want them to start at. So it's really important to keep the curve starting at zero, and that goes for any curve. Any curve we're gonna define for these burps, you should always have them start at zero and end at one. Whatever you do in the middle, that's at your discretion. You can do the crazy stuff. You can just do a simple S and parabolic curve. Either way is fine. And this behavior will work the same for every type of curve that we have. So regardless if we're choosing the fixed speed, the quaternions behave the same and the colors behave the same. So we can find all kinds of curves and get some really interesting behavior for each one of these. Again, with an infinitely rotating object, this ends up looking pretty weird. It actually, if you chose some behavior like this, maybe that works out really well to kind of showcase like a broken robot or cure or something like that because they kind of move at an unpredictable pace here. With the color, we can get some really interesting results with different curves. And it feels a little bit more natural than some of those rotation ones we're looking like. You can create really cool glowing effects, dampening out or even fading out if you're gonna mess with a transparent object. All right, if you're still with me, I got one bonus piece of content for you with advanced slurping, and that's the Vector3 slurp. Yes, not only Quaternion slurp, also vector three slurp. And you'll notice that this cube is not moving in a straight line between these two points. It kind of has a little arc in it, even though we have a linear curve. Maybe this makes it a little bit more clear. It's not moving in a straight line. It just adds a little bit of a curve while this vector is lurping. So we can have both curved movement with a curved time to get some really cool smoothing behavior when removing some positions. Vector three slurp spherically interpolates between two vectors. And the difference here is that linear interpolation, what we've been using so far, is that the vectors are treated as directions instead of points in space. What this one's doing is including the angle and its magnitude to spherically interpolate between the from and to points, or the A and B in this signature that we're talking about up here. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you wanna support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which tier is right for you, get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier and some other cool perks at the tremendous and phenomenal tier level. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, and Paul Barry. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. As you can see from all of these examples of using the lerps with two curves for the time parameter, what that's doing is allowing us to mutate the time and manipulate how the lerp understands time to get some smoothing effects and some also pretty interesting effects, maybe ending early, starting late. I hope this helps deepen your understanding of what you can do with a lerp. It doesn't always have to be strictly linear and that it helps you add some new game feel into your game. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people and add value to more people. This new video is posted every tutorial Tuesday and I'll see you next week.